ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ثم اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار ثم أما بعد We begin as always by praising Allah Jalla Jalaluhu with praises and exaltations that only He is worthy of. We begin as always by sending His salawat and His salamat His blessings and His peace upon the last and final messenger Muhammad ibn Abdullah alayhi salatu was salam Would the people please tighten your ranks Make sure there's no gaps between where you're sitting. As you can see, there are people still coming into the masjid so that they have room to sit down. And please move up if you have the capability of moving up. Allah Ta'ala yubarik fikum wa yazidukum khaira. The esteemed scholar, the Imam, Al-Imam Ibn Al-Qayyim rahimahullahu Ta'ala, he says, وقت الإنسان هو عمره في الحقيقة وهو مادة حياته الأبدية في النعيم المقيم ومادة معيشته في العذاب الأليم He says, وقت الإنسان The time يعني Not time generally that exists, right? Time exists. Allah Ta'ala created everything and time will exist uh, uh, as long as we are here. Time will continue to exist after we're gone. But here, he says, وَقْتُ insan, وَقْتُ هُوَ الْمُضَافُ وَالْإِنسَانُ هُوَ الْمُضَافُ إِلَيْهِ يعني our time. There's time. Time that everyone has. Time that the creation has. But then there's our time. My time and your time. He says, وَقْتُ الْإِنسَانِ هُوَ عُمْرُهُ فِي الْحَقِيقَةِ your age, whatever amount of time Allah Ta'ala has given you is appointed. If Allah Ta'ala has decreed you're going to be 80 years old, that is the time that you have. That is the material that you have to build your life in Jannah. That is the material, the substance. Yani Allah Ta'ala wa Ta'ala has given you, He says, مَادَّةُ tu hayate. مَادَّةُ حَيَاتِهِ الْأَبَدِيَّ فِي النَّعِيمِ الْمُقِيمِ وَمَادَّةُ مَعِيشَتِهِ فِي الْعَذَابِ الْأَلِيمِ Allah Ta'ala in this life has given you material, time. That is the material that you will use to either build an everlasting life of happiness in Jannah or an existence of misery in Jahannam. What you use this time for and what you use it for and what you build is your choice. He says, وَهُوَ يَمُرُّ مَرَّ السِّحَاب The passing of these days, of this substance that Allah Ta'ala has given you, how does it, it passes with the passing of clouds. As the clouds, they pass you by, that is the passing of time. There's no stopping it. It doesn't stop for you, it doesn't stop for me. Okay? If I become happy, it doesn't slow down. If I become sad, it doesn't... It doesn't uh, 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 quicken. It doesn't pass me by faster. فَمَنْ كَانَ وَقْتُهُ لِلَّهِ وَبِاللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَيَاتُهُ وَعُمْرُهُ وَغَيْرُ ذَلِكَ لَيْسَ مَحْسُوبًا مِنْ حَيَاتِهِ 
فإذا قطع وقته في الغفلة والسهو والأمان الباطلة وكان خير ما قطعه بالنوم والبطالة فموت هذا خير من حياته He says رحمه الله تعالى Listen to this statement The time that you benefit from that is the true substance of what Allah Ta'ala has given you. In a day, whatever time you benefit from, whatever time you benefit from, فَهُوَ حَيَاتُهُ وَعُمْرُهُ فَإِذَا قَطَعَ وَقْتَهُ فِي الْغَفْلَةِ وَالسَّهْوِ وَالْأَمَانِ الْبَاطِلَةِ and if you are spending your time fil ghafla heedlessness you're heedless in your time la tahtam bi waqtik you don't give importance to time the seconds the minutes the hours the days the weeks the months the years that yani la ahmiyata laha there's no there's no value to it right there's no value to it Allah Ta'ala gave you two free hours, you will more than happily sit and binge watch Netflix. That's the worth of time that people have nowadays. Sit down on YouTube and just go through videos. Up for hours on end. Go through garbage videos. That's the ahmiyyah of time. Al-Imam Ibn Qayyim, rahimahullah ta'ala, he says, the one who spends his time in this manner, wa kana khayru, ما قطعه به النوم والبطالة. يعني a person you'll find people that the best thing that they're doing with their time is sleeping. حقيقة. We're not saying that as a as an عيب upon them, but in reality, the best thing that they can do with their time is sleep. Why? Because when they're sleeping, at least they're not being disobedient to Allah Taala. If they're sleeping, at least they're not disobeying. At least they're not sinning. At least they're not drinking. At least they're not lying. At least they're not doing all of these things that will bring about harm. So the best thing that they can do with their time is sleep. He says, فَمَوْتُ هَذَا خَيْرٌ مِّنْ حَيَاتِهِ The death of this individual is far better than the life of this individual. The importance of time in the Qur'an can be elaborated on, we can explain it by the very fact that Allah Ta'ala in the Qur'an, He swears by time. He says, وَالْعَصَرْ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرِ By time, mankind is in loss. Right? Allah Ta'ala also, He swears by the different parts of time. وَالضُّحَى وَالْلَيْلِ إِذَا سَجَى Allah Ta'ala, He swears by the different parts of time. Allah Ta'ala, He swears by night, He swears by the forenoon, He swears, he swears by the morning. And Allah Ta'ala swears by time itself. And He says, وَالْعَصَرْ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرٍ By time, mankind is in loss. It comes in the book of Az-Zuhd collected by Ibn Majah narrated by Abdullah ibn Sa'id ibn Abi Hind upon his father Sami'tu ibn Abbas yaqulu qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam نعمتان مغبون فيهما كثير من الناس الصحة والفراغ الصحة والفراغ The Prophet of Allah عليه الصلاة والسلام He said as Abdullah ibn Abbas رضي الله تعالى عنه He narrates, he says نعمتان مغبون فيهما كثير من الناس الصحة والفراغ. You have two blessings of Allah Taala. 
that many of the people are heedless of. They waste it away. As-sihhatu wal-firagh. Health and free time. The scholars they mention, I believe it's Imam An-Nawawi rahimahullah ta'ala. To the best of my recollection, it's Imam An-Nawawi and Allah ta'ala he knows best. They mention that the most heedless person, the most heedless person of these two blessings is that individual that has both of them at the same time. Think about this. That individual that has both a sihha wal firagh at the same time, it is a dangerous combination. It's a dangerous combination. For an individual that is weak in their iman. We don't, we're not speaking about weak in their, yani, uh, 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 we're not speaking about weak in their body, right? And you have people, they work out. Every day, yani every week, someone a uh, thousand push-ups a day, thousand sit uh, sit-ups a day, right? Spend hours upon it, hours in the gym, right? Ask them how many ayats did you memorize today? How many ayat did you memorize? Did you memorize one ayat? I told one individual, may Allah Taala increase them. I said, memorize just amma yatasa alun. And he, someone comes and they say that. I'm not benefiting, I'm not doing that. I say, khalas, memorize amma yatasa'alu. Just memorize that. Memorize that. Said it three weeks ago, they haven't memorized it yet. And then they say, why is there not a difference? Why is no difference being made? Because you're heedless of your time. Because I'm heedless of my time. Because we're heedless of our time. So it passes us by as the clouds they pass by. The reason for this is mentioned because a person that has both free time and health. You may have a person that has free time but is not healthy. So the lack of health slows them down in disobedience to Allah Ta'ala. It slows them down. The lack of health may also be a reminder for them of the shortness of life. Or you may have an individual that is healthy but does not have free time. They have responsibilities. They have a wife. They have children. They have parents. So they have responsibilities with them. So they are continuously busy. This one, the harm that this individual may inflict upon themselves is also limited. Think about that. Think about that for a moment. That there are moments in our life that are painful there are occurrences in our life that are undesired. But maybe that's happening to you so as to save you from your own harm. To save you from your own harm. We can each and every one of us look back at our lives and say that how Allah Ta'ala blessed us and how we took that blessing only to harm our own selves with it. So maybe Allah Ta'ala is showing you mercy. But in this hadith there is another meaning in that sihha and firagh and free time should be looked at as a blessing that we can utilize to benefit our own selves. The amount of free time that we have in these days was unimaginable. Was unimaginable. Right? I mean, the ease that exists in our lives. We don't have to wash clothes anymore. We don't need to wash dishes anymore. We hardly need to cook anymore. All of the necessities of life, if we still need to do them, have become easy. Putting in our pockets time. That we can use. That we can use to learn our religion. Memorize Quran. Read tafsir. Memorize ahadith. Read books and understand them. 
We have ample time. Ample time. Some of the people, Sheikh Badiuddin, Allah Ta'ala Yarhamuhu, he was from the Muhaddithun of Pakistan. Allah Ta'ala Yarhamuhu. He had mentioned in a lecture that a lot of the people today, they make excuses on learning their religion. Ask yourselves, how many ahadith of the Prophet have you memorized? How many have you memorized? How much of the Qur'an have we memorized? Placed in our hearts, memorized it, understood it, and acted upon it. How much? Shaykh Badi, Allah Ta'ala, Yarhamu, he said, you find the people nowadays making excuses, I'm busy. I'm busy, I have work, I have a family, I have, I have children. I have a house, I have a car, I need to work. I need to do this, I need to do that. I don't have time. I don't have time. And he says, it's as though they imagine that Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman and Ali, رضي الله تعالى عنهم أجمعين, and Abdullah ibn Mas'ud and Abdullah ibn Abbas and Abu Huraira, رضي الله تعالى عنهم, وسائر الصحابة, all of the Sahaba, all they had was time. They had no needs in life whatsoever. They never ate, they never worked, right? They didn't have any families. They had nothing to do. Imagine if the likes of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, the likes of Abdullah ibn Abbas, the likes of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, and all of the rest of the Sahaba, Anas ibn Malik, I'm forgetting there's, there's seven that are, yani you will find the most ahadith narrated upon these seven. And I'm forgetting the final three. But from amongst the Abdullah ibn Abbas, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, uh, Anas ibn Malik, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. Imagine if they said, we're too busy. Imagine. Imagine that they said, we're too busy. What would you have from your religion today? What would we have from our religion today if they said they were too busy? If Imam Bukhari said, forget the dunya, I'm too busy. What if Imam Bukhari said that? What if those scholars of the past, they said that? What would you have from your deen today? And then answer the question, what are we leaving for our children? What are we leaving for our children? Hada wa sallallahu wa sallim ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah, wa ala alihi wa ashabihi, wa man taba'ahum bi ihsanin ila yawmiddin wa ba'd. As for how to benefit from our time, then there are, la shak wa la rayb, many, uh, uh, there are many manners of doing that, right? From the manners of doing that is organizing your time. These are points of benefit that a Shaykh Abdul Aziz ibn Baz rahimahullah ta'ala He says that bil ikhtisar we'll mention it uh, just generally he says tanzim al waqt your time can be categorized and we allow sleep to control us the prophet alayhi salatu wassalam was organized in his time. After Isha, he did not like speaking or remaining awake. He did not like it. Because, because he had to wake up in the morning. And he would wake up early and before Fajr and he would pray. So he would not go to sleep late. Teach your children, right? That sleep, right, should be enslaved to you. 
It is your servant. You should not be the servant of your sleep. When you have free time, when you have free time, benefit from that time. Have a barnamij. Have a curriculum which is in front of you and say, this is my curriculum. This is what I'm following. When I have free time and I know I have free time on Mondays and Tuesdays and this day and that day, I have an hour here and I have an hour there. This is the book that I'm reading. This is the book. This is the lecture I'm listening to. Here's my notebook. I'm going to write my notes in this book. I'm going to memorize it. I'm going to go through this book until I memorize it, until I know it. From those affairs that aids a Muslim on protecting their time is learning self-control. Teach yourself self-control. Teach yourself self-control in your daily life, in all of your affairs. How do you control your sleeping? How do you control your eating? How do you control your drinking? How do you control your speech? Again, these are affairs that Allah Ta'ala gave to you to use for your own benefit. Allah Ta'ala did not enslave you to them. Many of us, we enslave ourselves to these things, right? We enslave ourselves. I mentioned this example a thousand times, driving down the highway. Let the thought of a coffee come into someone's mind and they're looking for the next Dunkin' Donuts. No self-control. So we need to teach ourselves these affairs. How do we teach ourselves self-control? تَرْبِيَةُ النَّفْسِ عَلَىٰ عُلُوُّ الْهَمَّةِ Teach yourself to give importance to what is important. And not to give importance to what is not important. وَبِذَلِكَ نَكْتَفِي إِنشَاءَ اللَّهُ تَعَلَىٰ هَذَا وَسَلَّ اللَّهُ وَسَلَّمْ على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وإقامة الصلاة